What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, the number one place for new coaches, content creators, and entrepreneurs. In today's video, I really wanna share with you guys some tips and strategies on how exactly I film my YouTube videos, specifically how I went from spending over five hours of just filming one video alone to finally cutting that time in more than half. Now, after a whole year of being on YouTube and posting about more than 75 videos to date on the platform, I've definitely picked up a couple of strategies that are really going to help you. Now, obviously at the end of the day, this all takes practice and consistency. You cannot expect your first few videos to just be filmed in less than 10 minutes. Even for me, I'm not even at that point yet. However, I do hope that this video is at least going to save you a lot of the initial headaches that I went through so that you can really get a head start on your YouTube journey. So if you're interested in learning about how I film my videos, some of the key tools that I use in order to be efficient, then keep on watching. The first tip that's really helped me in becoming a little bit more efficient, especially after some practice, is having a bullet point script structure. Now, in the beginning when I was doing my videos, I used to have a whole transcription of what I would actually say in the video. And I was glued to the idea that if I strayed away from this script, then I made a mistake. And therefore, I would force myself to start all over again. I was literally in the mindset that if I didn't follow this script, then the video was not going to be good. However, there were a lot of issues with this. Specifically, what we're doing here, if you do something like this, is called over scripting. If you are literally trying to control every aspect of your video, you're going to have a really hard time because you have to realize that how you type something out may not be necessarily how you're saying something in real life. And it took me a really long time to understand that this isn't really efficient because that's not how I actually talk in real life. And therefore, it made my process of filming a lot longer than it had to be. Not only this, what I found is that by memorizing off of this crazy script, I didn't really sound natural. In fact, I kind of sounded robotic. So what I found is having a looser script does give you more flexibility to be yourself. And that actually makes your videos a little bit more engaging. Now, on the flip side, I've also not scripted my videos before, and that was equally a disaster. That's why at the end of the day, I still believe having a script is important or at least having some sort of structure to your videos are important because if you under script, AKA you don't script at all or you don't have anything at all and you're expecting to just wing it, that also creates some problems. And for me, when I did this, I ended up going off track, off tangent. I ended up messing up even more than when I was scripting my videos. And not only this, I was really stressed because I would literally try to think about what I wanted to say while the camera was rolling. And by the end of that video, I would realize, oh shoot, I missed something that was really important that probably would have made the video stronger. So that's why even though I'm saying that over scripting is not good, under scripting can also equally hurt the efficiency of your filming process as well. So at this point, you might be wondering, okay, Vanessa, so what do you do when you film? Well, I'm going to share my screen and kind of show you and walk you through what exactly I do. Hey guys, so right now we're looking at a script of a recent video that I did. Now, as you can see, I still have a script, but it's very simple. It's not like a crazy transcription of word for word what I want to say. And instead, I've got some main key points that I want to hit. I've got some bullet points that I want to share. And that's pretty much it. It's not rocket science. And I find that this way to be a lot more efficient and a lot easier for me to still sound natural while also having some some sort of structure. Now, obviously everyone is different in their approach, but after a whole year of being on YouTube, for me, this is what is currently working really well so far. And it's truly cut my scripting time and my recording time in pretty much half. Anyways, with that being said, let's just go straight back into the video. Now, at this point in the video, you might be thinking to yourself, great, so now I understand the bullet point method and how Vanessa does it, but does she still memorize it? Does she use a teleprompter? Are there sticky notes behind the camera that she references off of? How exactly does she know what to say when the camera is rolling? And I'm gonna tell you right now that my secret weapon is using Asana Mobile. Now, if you are familiar with my channel, you'll know that from these videos right 
here, I use Asana, the project management tool, for my entire YouTube workflow. And by the way, Asana is a free app that you can use. You don't have to pay for it to do the things that I do. But basically, my whole entire system around YouTube is in Asana. That's why, to make things easier for me, I've also downloaded Asana onto my phone as well. And what's really happening behind the scenes is that I have my mobile phone on my lap at all times. And prior to hitting record, I'm looking at my phone, looking at my script and seeing what I have to say. Then I put my phone down, I hit record, and then I film maybe five lines max. So what I'm doing is my camera isn't rolling for the entire hour and a half, and I'm not trying to film the entire video in just one take. What I'm actually doing is I'm filming in chunks. When you start filming in smaller chunks, meaning you have multiple clips that are maybe less than a minute long, it really does take off the edge of trying to set the expectation for yourself that you need to memorize the entire thing. Not only this, it's a lot more efficient because if you do end up making a big mistake in your video, you don't necessarily have to start all over again and all you have to do is just restart that one section within your video. Now, if you still don't understand what I mean by filming in chunks, let me just give you a quick example. When I start out my videos, I always say, what is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, the number one place for new coaches, content creators, and entrepreneurs. That's one line. In today's video, I'm gonna answer a question that I get a lot, and that is, Vanessa, how do you film more efficiently for your channel? That's two lines. Well, in today's video, I'm going to teach you step-by-step step how you can film a lot more efficiently when it comes to your videos for YouTube. That's three lines. And then up until that point, I'll probably stop recording. Now, it obviously depends on your experience level. You could just do one line and then hit stop, or you can do two lines, three lines, four lines. Depends on how much you want to fit in one clip. But what I found is that maybe two lines is already enough for me, and then I'll stop the recording, and then I'll move on to the next clip. And what ends up happening is at the end of everything, I'll have about 20 to 30 clips that are less than a minute long for Elena to edit and string together. Not only this, by filming in chunks, what I like to do is I know that if I really epically screwed up a clip, then I can just simply delete it. And that ensures that all the clips that I'm sending to Elena, my video editor, it's all going to make it into the final video. And I'm also not wasting her time for her to comb through hours of footage in one clip to delete all of my bloopers and delete all of my mistakes. Now that doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes. However, for the really big massive mistakes that I know for sure aren't really going to make it in the video, I'll make sure to delete them right away from my SD card in order to ensure that all the clips that I'm sending to Elena are the ones that are truly necessary. And speaking of mess ups, just as a bonus tip, unless it's a really big mess up that you know for sure it's unsalvageable and you can't move on, you have to delete the clip right away and refilm that clip, that's totally fine. However, really do train yourself to just pick yourself back up over minor mistakes. Now, if you don't believe me, let me just show you a footage from this video of me messing up and how I recovered from it versus just refilming that entire clip all over again. That I went through, that to cost, that I went through, that I, that I went through so that you can really save some time that I went through so that you can really get a head start on your YouTube journey. As you can see, with this method, you really gotta trust the editing process. Just know that if you have a very small minor screw up, maybe you missed a word or you stuttered, try to catch yourself or at least stop and pause and control your mindset and your breathing and then keep going. Just know that a lot of these smaller things can be edited out. Now, if you do have a really big mess up to the point of no return, it's simple. Just stop the recording, walk up to your camera, delete it, and then film it all over again. Now, again, if you are using this method where you're filming in chunks, it's not gonna take too much of your time versus if you're trying to take this whole one clip and film everything in one go, then you're gonna have a problem in your hands in a sense where you're gonna have to redo the whole thing and trust me, it is one of the most inefficient things as ever. Now at this point in the video, everything sounds fine and dandy. However, there is one major drawback when it comes to filming your videos in chunks, and that is the fact that you're gonna need to get out of your seat every single time you want to hit the record button or stop the record button. That's why my next major tip for you is to actually invest in a remote. For me, when I film, unless I really wanna double check a clip, I'm basically sitting on my chair the entire time. I don't have to get up or sit down every two seconds or every minute that 
that I'm filming because of this guy. And I have a remote for both my Canon and also my new Sony camera. And these things are really inexpensive. You can find them on Amazon for less than $20. Just make sure that it is compatible with your camera. But I guarantee you, this is going to be a huge game changer in terms of saving time when you're filming videos for your YouTube channel. Now, the topic of this remote isn't necessarily something that is new on my channel. I did mention it in this video right here where I talk more in depth about some equipment that I use, specifically equipment that's made the filming process a lot faster. So make sure you check out this video for more of that. However, if I were to choose one game changer, it would definitely be the remote. Now, speaking of equipment, I want you to hit the notification bell because in the next video, I'm actually gonna be filming a part two in a sense where I'm truly going to show you all the equipment that I use in order to film my video. Now, if you aren't new to my channel, you've probably noticed that the quality has upgraded quite a bit. And the fact is, is that I did invest in more equipment for my channel. So that's why I really want you to hit the notification bell because I'm truly gonna give you a walkthrough of my new YouTube setup and show you all the bells and whistles of the things that I invested in. In the meantime, while you wait for that video, make sure you also check out these two videos that I have right here. I love talking about social media, entrepreneurship, and marketing. So make sure you also check out these two videos as well. As always guys, I appreciate you. I hope you guys have a great day, a great week, and a great life. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.